Did you know that there are three main things to avoid in Christian entrepreneurship? All right, so the first big one, the first thing that you wanna make sure that you run away from and that you avoid completely as a Christian entrepreneur is overthinking it. If you are stuck in a place where you're overthinking things and you're overanalyzing, it is going to be uh, something that just takes your business, it's gonna be like having chains around your legs. It's like pulling a ball and chain or being stuck in jail as an entrepreneur. It is one thing that will rob you of joy. It will rob you of success. Uh, overthinking it is just paralyzing for people. And so we wanna make sure that we run away from that. We know how to uh, have an awareness and a discernment of when we're doing it. So what I really wanna speak into you right now is, is thinking about, you know, when am I overthinking it? So what is wisdom? what is making a decision, and then what is just completely overthinking and overanalyzing because it's really rooted in fear, or it's the enemy just trying to get you distracted and distorted and off your path. And so when it comes to making decisions in business, um, what I would encourage you to do is, is to really focus on strengthening your decision-making skills. So just like anything in life, did you know that that's an actual, that's like a muscle that you can work out? Just like a bicep, the more that you work out a bicep at the gym, the stronger it's gonna get. Well, you can actually practice making decisions. You can grow your wisdom and discernment through, you know, through practice and through, you know, more trial. And so um, what I wanna encourage you to do is that when you feel like you're in a place of indecision, and you're just overthinking it, you're overanalyzing, number one is catch yourself. And that comes down to awareness. So right now, just by me talking about it with you, it's like we're shedding light on a big topic to avoid. So because now that it's, it's in the top of your mind, because it's in your consciousness right now, because we've shed you know, light on it, now you know when to, you know, to be aware of it. And so it, so the symptoms of it would be, you know, you're asking other people, you're doing decision-making by committee. So if you find yourself asking, you know, your spouse or your friends, your family members, other people, and you're like asking two, three, four, five, six plus people about a decision you have that you need to make, you're probably overthinking it. If you're, um, if there's something that you've been wanting to do that you haven't actually done yet, then you're probably overthinking it you're not taking the action. And we actually have uh, another video which talks about the three different types of entrepreneurs and the thinker is one of them. So you might wanna watch that video too. So that's one thing you wanna make sure you avoid is overthinking it and to break through overthinking, again, it's awareness and then it also comes down to make a decision and make it right. Knowing that by you choosing a decision the fear where people don't want to make a decision, they overthink it, is because they're worried that they're going to pick the wrong thing and they're going to be stuck with the consequences. But how cool is it that you can make a decision and make it right? I know that I've overthought things like, for example, investing in a coach or investing in a mastermind. I've had those thoughts of like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money to invest in a coach or a mastermind. And the fear comes up. Now, if it were five bucks, it wouldn't be a big deal, but when it's, you know, 10, 15, 20, $25,000, the fear does something to you. Can you relate to that? Where all of a sudden it's like, well, what if it doesn't work? Or what if this, or what if I lose the money? Or blah, blah, blah. And we just get in our heads, we get spun around versus, you know what? I'm gonna come from a place of faith. I'm gonna come from a place of discernment. I'm gonna make a decision and make it right. I'm going to make that decision and say yes to hiring that coach or yes to jumping in that mastermind. And I'm gonna be believing that there will be fruit from it. I'm gonna be believing, uh, I'm gonna get a return on that investment. And so that's how Megan and I, we've walked into so many different, you know, stressful decisions and said, you know what? We are making a decision and we know we get to make it right and you do too. So the second thing that you wanna avoid is toxic people. And so toxic people, what does that look like? I mean, we all, you know, know a couple toxic people, but that might be gossipers, complainers, people who make excuses. You know, have you ever heard the story about crabs in a bucket? So there's an old story that when crabs are in a bucket, so think about these big old crabs inside of a, you know, a pail, like a silver pail or whatever, and they can start to stack themselves to get out of the bucket and like throw their arm, you know, one of their legs over the side of the bucket. They can start to actually get out of the bucket, but what happens is that as soon as one of the crabs is right at the top, they're about to be free out of this jail, out of this bucket, another crab 
reaches up with their claw and pulls them right back down. Who in your life is that crab? Who is that person? When you say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm going to go write a book or I'm going to go start a YouTube channel. And they say, who's going to read your book? Who's going to watch your videos? What makes you think you're qualified to go do that? Who is that crab in your life? Let us know in the comments or actually maybe, maybe don't use their name, but maybe you can just let us know if you can relate to this concept. Toxic people can bring us down. And so, you know, what's the solution for it? Well, uh, our pastor, um, you know, Pastor Keith Kraft, he talks about we have our family of origin, right? So there's our family that is, you know, you've got your mom and your dad and your siblings. You have your family of origin, but there's a concept that he calls your family of choice. You get to create that business family, that business community. You get to go put yourself in a position by being in a certain community that will elevate you and that will help you rise up and step into your greatest version of you, unleash your God-given potential. And so when you identify toxic people through whether it's gossip or how they make you feel, maybe they're pulling you down. Unfortunately, not everyone loves seeing someone around them create massive success because it makes them feel less than because they're not going for it. So in that, in that situation, what if you were to make a conscious effort? What if you were to say, you know what? I'm going to go put myself in a room where everyone else is smarter than me, where everyone else is smarter than you. Can you go to a meetup? Can you go be a part of an online group? You know, we have our Life on Fire. We'd love for you to join our Life on Fire family. It's completely free. It's on Facebook. It's the Life on Fire movement page. We have 50,000 faith-based entrepreneurs from all over the world. And every single day you see inspirational posts. You see people that are winning. We have a culture and a mindset to encourage each other, to speak life into each other, as opposed to people getting comparison and thinking, I can't believe she did that or he did that. It's a culture. It's a mindset. So when we can run away from toxic people and instead we get to go be the light for others and surround ourselves with other believers, other people that are taking ground, that are out there doing big things, that have vision, it's, it's a completely different way to live your life. I've lived my life surrounded by, you know, I, I've been in, you know, there's the different cliques of friends, right? Like in high school, there's the, the different cliques. There's the, the band people, the sports people, right? The cheerleaders. Well, I've had in, in business, I've been around really bad business people. And I recognize that if I stay in that path, my whole life will go a completely different direction. And the devil wanted me with those people versus I pulled myself out and I said, you know, I'm going to find a mentor. I'm going to find a coach, find someone that I can be around. So the third thing that you want to avoid as a Christian entrepreneur is self-sabotage. So easier said than done, right? I mean, self-sabotage. How do we avoid self-sabotage? So the tricky thing with self-sabotage is that we don't know we're doing it. <laughs> Isn't that interesting, right? How do we self-sabotage or what does that look like? Have you ever known somebody who they start looking like they're creating success or they get things going and they're doing good and all of a sudden it all falls apart? Or maybe it's someone that gets into a relationship and things are going great. I think, think they're going to marry this person and then it all falls apart. Oftentimes it actually comes from the inside. It's from self-sabotage, from past experiences, past deep-rooted beliefs, past limiting beliefs. And how do we break free from something if we can't see it, we can't touch it, we don't know it exists, that's where coaches comes in. So to have a coach to see something that you're doing that you can't see, that's why we say have a coach, have a mentor, have a pastor who's actively speaking into your life. So self-sabotage, it's kind of like if you're inside of a jar. So if we think about if you're inside of like a mason jar or like a pickle jar, you can't see that sticker that's on the outside, right? Because I'm in it. I'm in the pickle jar, the mason jar. You can see what the label says, but I can't. It's just white. So that's the power of having a coach, having a mentor, where they can have an outside perspective and look at you and say, oh, well, it's so clear. I see that you're doing this. I see that you're doing this action. And that's why it's leading to that self-sabotage. So one of the greatest ways to break through self-sabotage is having somebody in your life, a coach, a mentor, a pastor, uh, a loved one, ideally someone who's qualified because it will help you see the things that you don't see, right? If you've ever been on, on, on the highway and you're driving and you go to, you put your blinker on, you go to change lanes, 
oh, there's a car there, that's in a blind spot. You just didn't see it. That's what a great coach, mentor, uh, or pastor will do for you is to see those blind spots, see the blind spots you know, that, that you're uh, living out in your business that's preventing you from busting through that next level to go unleash your God-given potential and grow your business to where it really could be grown to. So one of my greatest, um, I would say, life messages of my entire life, for those of you that know my story, have seen other videos, um, after struggling for so many years, 18 to 28, it was getting a mentor that changed everything. So I wanna encourage you, get in community. Come join us in our free community, Life on Fire family. Get plugged in with us. The Life on Fire family would love to surround you with encouragement. Go be in proximity with amazing people. Uh, and also think about who's the coach or mentor that can get you to where you want to go. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd love to see your comments below. How are you avoiding these common big mistakes that Christian entrepreneurs make? And we love you and God bless you.